vigilance, the action or state of keeping careful watch, standing guard, defending the bulwark between the righteous and the godless. I'm Lance Earl. Welcome. Uh, <laughs> today's topic is going to be a little bit interesting. I'm going to be playing a video of the city council meeting in Twin Falls. I attended that meeting this past Tuesday, and I addressed <laughs> the members of the city council and the mayor, and I cannot begin to express how disappointed I am in elected officials who refuse to answer the simplest of questions. So anyway, I'm just going to uh, let you enjoy this video, and I apologize for the jitteriness of it. I apologize for the lower quality audio, but I think you'll hear it. But I, mostly, most of all, I think you will see what corruption looks like. I'm here today because I have noticed that Twin Falls has made the news, national news, a lot lately over the immigrant problems that you have right here, especially since the uh, rape or molestation or whatever it was of that young girl. And I've been very disappointed as I have watched the people from both sides. I don't believe anyone has yet addressed the core uh, foundational uh, problems that we have here. And so I'd like to do that tonight. And I would like to start by uh, first stating that I would assume that most of you can remember swearing an oath to protect and defend the Constitution. If you remember that, would you affirm that you did? Mr. Talkington doesn't remember that oath? Nice try at your humor. Well. Get your nipples off. Okay. Uh, I also am wondering if you are interested in upholding that constitutional oath, and that's what I want to talk about tonight. Uh, I'm going to address, make my comments uh, specifically to the council and to our police chief, who I understand is sitting in the rear. The Constitution of the United States says very clearly in the Tenth Amendment that all powers not specifically granted to the federal government remain with local government and with the people. And uh, so I have some questions that I would like to ask of you. So before you start answer, asking your questions, I would like you to know that our intent is not to answer questions on the spot tonight. So if you have questions, we'll certainly, those that we can answer, we will. Fair enough. Those that we cannot, we will certainly get back to you. With, with Fair the enough. Questions. Fair enough. Um, I'm wondering if anyone on this council or if our police chief can point out the constitutional article that authorizes the federal government to manage immigration in the states. I'll help you out, it's not there. You can't. I'm wondering if any of you can point out the constitutional article that allows the federal government to take money out of my pocket and out of every pocket of the citizens of Twin Falls, every pocket of the American people, and not only that, to borrow against our uh, children and our children's children's future. I'm wondering if any of you can show me the constitutional article that allows that. I'm assuming not, because it's not there. And so I guess what I'm going to ask you now is why in the world have you not opposed this? Not because you're, not an, because you're anti-immigration or pro-immigration, but because you swore an oath to the Constitution. I would like to know why you have not opposed this federal abuse here in Twin Falls. Now we have a prosecutor who stated very clearly, in an, at least in an article that I read, he said that it's a federal matter. I would like to know if you are intent on upholding your constitutional oath, why have you not challenged him when he had said it's a federal matter, when in fact the Constitution says precisely that it's otherwise? We have a police chief back here who has allowed the, uh, the FBI to come and join in his investigation. And so, sir, I will ask you, 
What part of the Constitution allows the federal government to be involved in policing activities inside the states? I'll save you some time. It is a violation. You cannot do that. We have a United States attorney who has interjected herself in here and actually made threats to anybody that may want to say something about this case of this young girl. And I would like to know why you people have not stood up and said that she has no authority here and told her that no more intervention will be allowed. I'm asking you why you haven't done that. And specifically with this police chief who has stepped over the line not only on this issue of allowing the FBI to come in and rob the people of Twin Falls of their rights and to usurp power, I want to know why you, the city council, why you, the mayor, sorry about that, why you have not asked for his resignation. If he is going to violate the Constitution of the United States, he is an empty uniform and he should not be here. I would like to know the answers to those questions. Will I get an answer? We will certainly address uh, issues with policy and procedure. I, personally, I believe that much of what you're talking about is your interpretation of the Constitution. Well, then let's dig it out. So, Mr. Mr. Mayor, let's dig it out Mr. and let's go Mr. through it. Your time is expired. We will get back to you on the issues that you have raised. Thank okay. you. To the rest of you people out there, if you are tired of the trajectory that our nation is on, that our state is on, that our city is on, there are things that we can do, and it starts with taking care of this and taking care of that, and I will be right outside this door because I would like to help you do that. Thank you for your time. from Jerome, Idaho, and I'm here to speak. I'm going to donate, donate my time to Mr. Earl here. So, so again, if, if you would like to address the council on a broader issue, I would ask that you contact our city manager's office and ask to be placed on the agenda for the appropriate amount of time to have that discussion. Sir, if I may be blunt, I've just been given five minutes. I made my point. Now I would like some answers, if you would. Sir, speaking to you, Mr. Mayor, what part of the Constitution allows you to allow the federal government to import people into this state, into this city? There is none. And so I would like to talk a little bit about what immigration would look like. Mayor, you're the parliament. I, I've got five minutes that he gave me. Okay. I would. L Excuse me. I'd like to ask for advice of our legal counsel if you please step aside. Excuse me. You're not adding your time, are you? Before we get legal counsel. No, Excuse me. Go ahead. Let's get some counsel. Well, let's let's do it. Yeah. Okay. So we do not allow people to give time to other people during the course of any public hearing. You have never permitted it during your I would suggest that no one has ever asked before. I don't think there's precedent. I would also say there's no time limit mentioned on this agenda well, for I, public input. I, have they, the meeting, have they I, done that before? Yes, we do it quite often. Well, why isn't it publicized? We do it quite often. Why isn't it publicized? I, I'm sorry, we'll make sure that we write on the agenda. Well, you need to, to tell everybody how much time they're going to no. have to speak okay. in an open forum in a public situation. Mr. Edwards. What do you want? I want you to stop talking. Why? Because I'm, I'm at five to... minutes. I'm still talking. This is my five minutes. <laughs> so, my Mr. Five... Earl, your time has expired and you cannot address the council anymore. If you wish to address us next week or... Maybe we could have a conversation. If you wish to be... Can I, can I answer his questions? Yeah, let him answer my questions. <clears throat> He has the time. Yeah. Is my time up yet? Right, it was so exception going, of council. Are you council? Going to address the council on something that we can actually address with you, or are you going to just stop it? Doesn't it say here, um, 
general, general public, public input. I, I'm giving you some input. Okay. okay, it's general and it's public. And my time is, I, I would ask you to add my time from when this gentleman got up and gave you your, okay. May I just make, since I do have this time and you're not allowing him or myself, may I just make one comment about what immigration would look like if it were constitutional in Twin Falls? Take me one minute. Will you allow that? I drove two yeah, hours no, to be sure. here. I'll let you, you go take ahead. one minute and then will you please let us move on? With I certainly will. What would immigration look like in Twin Falls if we were constitutional? My grandfather was a Danish bastard. He grew up at a time and in a place where being an illegitimate child was very difficult. He grew up in, a, uh, in a, an orphanage. When he was a teenager, he snuck away. He arranged passage on a ship in exchange for his work, and he came to America. He could not speak the language. He had no money, but he had a dream. And as an immigrant, no one offered him a handout. Mr. Tonkington said that what's going on here is the same as when his family came from the uh, potato uh, famine in Ireland. Is that correct? I heard something about that. I read something about that. Yeah. The, the thing is, it's not at all the same thing. My grandparents, your grandparents, they came here at great personal sacrifice. They came here with no one offering them free food, free housing, or at least subsidized, subsidized incomes. They came here with a dream and they made it work. Now my grandfather never amounted to much. He was just a sheep herder. But you know what? That's everything to an orphan boy from Denmark. And that, and he was a productive citizen. If you people, if you well, people would go time. back to the constitutional principles, the people that would be coming here would be the cream of the crop. They would be coming here to work and to integrate and to be American citizens. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm Lance Earl. I'll see you soon.